Hello, this is Dominic from Paphos Life, and I'm trying something new today. I'm adding a audio commentary to one of my driving films, so that I can hopefully give you a bit more information as we go along. If you like our films, please do subscribe to the channel and click to get notified when we produce new uh, films. And if you want to help us financially, you can go to our pathoslife.com slash coffee page and either just click on the affiliate link to Amazon and go and buy your next hi-fi from there or whatever, or actually buy us a coffee in uh, one of the links there. Uh, any help is gratefully appreciated. Thank you. Right, let's get this show on the road. We're just setting off from Coralia Beach. Uh, if you want to get here and you're not in a car, then you can get the 615 bus from Paphos and it'll actually drop you off in this car park. And it's the last stop on the route, the one after Cobble Bay Beach itself. And in Cobble Bay, there are two main beaches. There's this one, Coralia Beach, and Cobble Bay Beach itself, as I just mentioned. Um, whichever one you prefer is down to you. Now, I'm going to pause the film here briefly while all these buggies go past. Joy's been able to edit. Just coming up here on the left, you can turn. See that one? I'm not sure. There's a, anyway, there's a road that goes to the coast again, and there's a little uh, memorial church there. That's rather nice. Uh, a few years ago, lots and lots of people used to leave pebbles with memorials to people there, but. They all seem to have got cleared up by now. And it's now just a memorial to one person, I think. But it's a nice area, and there's a nice walk along the coast there as well. Yes, that was a turning there. Now we're entering the banana plantations. There are lots of these around the sea caves area and the lower pair. And soon there's a turning uh, on the left to another restaurant, uh, Yalos I think it's called, which is by the coast. Uh, that's nice too, and this is, if you want to uh, be a bit more remote, that's a nice place to go to for a walk. Oh, there you go, the Yalos restaurant is turning with the. Uh, you can see some prickly pears on the left now. I'm not much of a fan of them, to be honest. Far more hassle than they're worth. I just prefer pears. Oh, one thing I should point out is that uh, this route is part of our second road trip ebook uh, that will take you from Paphos to Agios Georgius, uh, then up to uh, Polis on the other side via the Karmas villages and uh, Aphrodite's baths. It's a great day out, and uh, you can get the uh, ebook on Amazon using the link above. Okay. We're now approaching the wreck of the Edro Free. Um, there are two ways of getting to it. The first is a little bit bumpy, but it gives you a view of the wreck from across the little bay that it's in, and that's just turning there. And the second uh, way of getting to it is to drive you up to the restaurant, and you'll just see the turning up ahead where the blue car is coming out there. If you go down there, you can park, not necessarily in the restaurant car park, but there's just some space past it. And from there, you can actually walk up to the wreck itself. Uh, I think it was 2011 that the wreck happened it was they were 
transporting plasterboard from Limassol. No one was hurt in it, but uh, it's been there ever since and it's now become a tourist attraction. If you do want to hire a buggy, uh, you, a good idea might be to go on a buggy tour like the people we just saw back there. Because um, then you'll see things and you're less likely to hurt yourself really. There are quite a few injuries on buggies. So another thing you should do is check your insurance but also look at the link uh, I'll stick up here which will get, uh, show you lots of uh, reviews of the tour companies. But this is Sea Caves itself. We recently uh, put a road, this road here, has replaced the road you can see on the left there because it was basically, the, it was uh, caving away. And from there you can walk along the coast and it's uh, some of the most beautiful countryside in Cyprus, I'd say. Until you get to Cap St George and then it's uh, a holiday resort. And there are various opinions floating around on Cap St George and the encroaching villas. Uh, I think I'll just try and remain agnostic on that and I'll just show you what's there and you can draw your own conclusions. Now if you're coming at uh, doing this route the opposite way you might miss the turning that I'm going to make here and if you do that you'll just end up on the main coast road so just come back and take it because it's not the signpost isn't very obvious. I think in the last film I did I actually did miss this turning. going at, uh, left and this will take us into Cap St George. Uh, now one of the turnings up here, probably the first one, will also take you, if you can find it, in the uh, maze of twisty little passages to a car park further along Sea Caves, uh, which is handy if you want to get further around without walking up the hill. I think it was that one. Entering the resort that is Cap St. George, George. Now, when we first moved here, it was quite a small place, but it's gradually growing bigger and bigger. And by all accounts, it's a very nice place to stay. Don't get me wrong. And the landscaping they've done down by the beach is really nice. You can see it's nice here too. So you've got a hotel on your right and a bit of accommodation down here. Glad I don't have to cut all those hedges. There's the main reception and restaurant area, I think.
And if you go left here, it takes you down to the beach. It's a little beach, but it's very nice. But we're going up into the village of Aos Georgius. You have to excuse my pronunciation if it's wrong. Uh, and there's a, lo there's, a nice, there's a lot to like about in this village. I mean, it's got a nice church. Uh, there's an archaeological site there. Nice big car park, which is easily accessible. And if you follow the road down to the coast itself, you come to a lovely port. Well, not port, harbour, because it's tiny. Uh, it's used for, by fishermen, and it's also a good place to see turtles in the uh, morning, because the fishermen return with their catch and are known to throw the leftover fish to the turtles to eat. Let me turn left here. There's one of the three private schools on the left, TLC, uh, that cater for English speakers in Paphos. There's TLC, Aspire, and the International School of Paphos. And the main three that people use if they want that sort of thing. You just see the archaeological site on the left. I'm not sure how much it costs to get in, but it'll only be a few euros. And the guy there is very uh, inf informative as well, apparently. There's the church, and the car there's one car park on the left, and the main car park's on the right part of this church. And there's another little one there. Let's go round the uh, car park and have a look. So you can see what the view is like from up here as well. people around at the moment. It was an unusually cloudy day when I made this film. And from the car park the road loops down to the harbour. And as I said, that's Yvonnesos Island in the distance. Uh, there's a lot of archaeological sites on that island. Someone pointed out what do they do about water? That's a good question because it must have been a pain back in the day getting water transported there. And now we're coming into the harbour. There's another car park down here which can get full on busy days and uh, that's it. We've arrived. So that's the end. Uh, if you like the film, please do subscribe and drop a comment whether you think the commentary that I provided was worth anything. It's hard just to sit here and make things up as I go along, but uh, we'll just see what happens. One day, who knows, I may even take some notes. Until then, I'll see you on the next film. Bye.